Howdy, and welcome everybody to the Outlaws of Thunder Junction pre-launch showcase here on Loading Ready Run. Pleased to have you with us today. I'm Graham, and uh, special guest, uh, Serge. So, Lur sent me mm -hmm. to Alberta mm -hmm. for months, and I had no idea why. Mm -hmm. But it was all training for this moment. Howdy! Yeah. It, it's so natural that's, now. That's where we keep our cowboys in Canada. <laughs> At least that's what they like to believe. Uh, <laughs> we have a great day of Magic the Gathering prepared for you. At least we hope so. It's all live. I can't wait to find out how it's all going to go. Um, you, you may have noticed, some people are already asking, this is not a PPR, a pre-pre-release, because we are not just doing pre-release stuff. This is the pre-launch showcase. We are showcasing uh, three different formats over the course of today. If you're watching live, Settle in. If you're watching this later uh, on the LRR MTG YouTube channel, this is the portion where we're going to be looking at the rules and sealed, and there will be some other videos that you can look for for draft and commander. So check those out elsewhere on the channel. But for those of you who are here with us live, uh, this is going to be uh, some fun stuff. This, uh, of course, uh, couldn't happen without the help of Wizards of the Coast. Uh, because they sent us all the product to use, so thank you, Wizards, for that. Uh, but this is not sponsored by Wizards. Who is it sponsored by? Well, as it turns out, you and your kind support of all the stuff that we do here, however you do that, such as at our Patreon, patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. We hugely appreciate it. Uh, by subscribing on Twitch, for those of you who are watching live. If you're watching live on the YouTube, you can become a member on that very YouTube channel. In fact, if you're watching the replay on LRRMTG on YouTube, we have turned on memberships for all the YouTube channels. So if that's how you choose to interact with stuff, you can do that there. Uh, basically, we've opened every possible valve for which you can choose to give us money because it's how we are able to keep doing all the things that we do here. We cannot thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if you, at almost, if you uh, can't get enough of Outlaws of Thunder Junction, which I gotta say, this set looks pretty sweet, uh, the, uh, and you're like, well, that was paper, but what about digitally? Great news there. On Wednesday, the 10th, we are bringing back the Fam Jam on a special day. It's part of the, well, it's the same day as, we're doing it, during the the arena early access streamer event which itself is back which i'm very excited about so we were invited to participate in that again and we thought well heck why not just do the fam jam on that day when everyone doesn't know anything about what's going on in the set so that's going to be all day starting at 10 a.m uh we're going to be going for i don't know hours and hours and hours and then there's about six or seven folks who are going to be swapping through and uh hanging out together uh here in this room on a bunch of different computers playing arena all day long uh that day so what are we doing today, though? What is the showcase? What are the things we're showing off? Well, later we'll be showing off Commander. Uh, the last thing on the schedule today is that we're going to be doing uh, a Commander game live with the four pre-con decks from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. And that is going to be with Ben, Cameron, Adam, and Serge. Prior to that, we're going to be doing a six-player draft. We uh, recorded the drafting portion of it and have edited it down into a lovely digestible draft video and then we're going to be doing three live rounds of draft. Before that, we're going to have a judge off. Serge and Nelson are going to be playing sealed with pre-release kits, the same kind of pre-release kits you can get at your pre-release, and that is going to happen after Serge deck builds live on camera for you, and that happens right after we learn what the heck is going on in Outlaws of Thunder Junction, mechanics and rules-wise, and because uh, Serge's <laughs> because Serge was mid wagon train on his way back, uh, really during, should have flown or something. That yeah. was quite the way to travel. Uh, we're gonna throw it over to Nelson for the rules video. So check out the rules for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Howdy, y'all. I'm Judge Nelson, and I'm the law around here, and I'm going to stop doing that accent. Today, I'm going to teach you the new mechanics of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So pay attention so you don't end up on the wrong side of the laugh total. Okay, now I'm done. Outlaw is a new game term that refers to any card with the assassin, mercenary, pirate, rogue, or warlock creature type. Outlaw is not a creature type. If an effect asks you to choose a creature type, you can't choose Outlaw. 
a card, spell, or permanent is an outlaw if it has the assassin, mercenary, pirate, rogue, or warlock creature type. It doesn't matter if it has more than one of those creature types. As long as it has at least one, it's an outlaw. Certain abilities reference outlaws. If an ability refers to an outlaw or whether a player controls an outlaw, it's referring only to permanents with one or more of the creature types specified above. Other abilities will refer to an outlaw spell or outlaw card in a zone other than the battlefield. Those abilities refer to spells and cards with one or more of the specified creature types. We always knew it was a crime to stifle your opponent's fetch land, but now we have the rules for it! A player commits a crime as they cast a spell, activate an ability, or put a triggered ability on the stack that targets at least one opponent, or at least one permanent spell or ability an opponent controls, or at least one card in an opponent's graveyard. The spell or ability doesn't even have to resolve. As soon as you're finished casting the spell, activating the ability, or putting the triggered ability on the stack, you've committed a crime. A player can commit only one crime per spell or ability they control. Targeting multiple opponents, permanents, spells, abilities, or cards with the same spell or ability doesn't constitute committing multiple crimes. Changing the target or targets of a spell or ability won't affect whether or not the controller of that spell or ability has committed a crime. Only the initial targets chosen for that spell or ability are used to determine whether or not its controller committed a crime. What does every villain need if they're going to pull off a big heist? A nefarious plot. So plan ahead and get your game plan rolling. To plot a card, pay its plot cost and put it into exile face up. On a later turn, you may cast it as a sorcery without paying its mana cost. Plot cost means any time you have priority during your main phase while the stack is empty, you may pay cost and exile this card from your hand. It becomes plotted. Exiling a card using its plot ability is a special action. Once you announce you're taking that action, no other player can respond by trying to remove that card from your hand. Plot cards can still be countered, just when they're cast. You can't cast a plotted card the same turn it became plotted. On any future turn, you may cast that card from exile without paying its mana cost during your main phase while the stack is empty. If you're casting a plotted card from exile, you can't choose to cast it for any other alternative costs. You can, however, pay additional costs, such as Kicker or Spree. Any mandatory additional costs must still be paid to cast the spell. If a plotted card has X in its mana cost, you must choose zero as the value of X when casting it without paying its mana cost. It's dangerous to go alone. Luckily, we have our trusty steed, which is very similar to a vehicle, except it's always a creature. Saddle N means tap any number of other untapped creatures you control with total power N or greater. This permanent becomes saddled until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Saddled isn't an ability that a creature has. It's just something true about that creature. It won't stop being saddled until the turn ends or it leaves the battlefield. Creatures with saddle can attack or block as normal, even if they aren't saddled. If a permanent becomes a copy of a saddled mount, the copy won't be saddled. You may activate a permanent saddle ability even if that permanent is already saddled. An ability that triggers when a creature attacks while saddled will trigger only if that creature was saddled when it was declared as an attacker. In the continuing saga of everything is just kicker, introducing Spree. Build your own spell from a whole menu of options, if you can afford to pay for it all. Spells with Spree have a plus sign indicator in the upper right corner of the card frame. This has no rules meaning and only serves to remind players that at least one additional cost is required to cast the spell. Each additional cost and associated mode in the text box is also preceded with a plus sign indicator. These symbols also have no rules meaning and are only there to remind players that the listed costs are additional costs. You must choose at least one of the listed modes and pay its associated additional cost in order to cast a spell with Spree. You choose the modes as you cast the spell with Spree. Once modes are chosen, they can't be changed. If a mode requires a target, you can select that mode only if there's a legal target available. Ignore the targeting requirements for modes you don't choose. No matter which modes you choose, you always follow the instructions in the order they are written. You can't choose the same mode more than once. The mana value of a spell with Spree is determined only by its mana cost in the upper right corner of the card. It doesn't matter which modes you choose or which additional costs you pay, including any additional costs imposed by other effects. No player can cast spells or activate abilities in between the modes of a resolving spell. Any abilities that trigger won't be put onto the stack until the spell is done resolving. If a spell with Spree is copied, the effect that creates the copy may allow you to choose new targets, but you cannot choose new modes. If all targets for the chosen modes become illegal, 
The spell won't resolve and none of its effects will happen. If at least one target is still legal, the spell will resolve but will have no effect on any illegal targets. If an effect like Plot allows you to cast a spell with Spree without paying its mana cost, you must still choose at least one mode and pay the associated additional costs. That's it for the Outlaws of Thunder Junction rules. During today's event, the players are going to be seeing and playing with these cards for the very first time. Mistakes happen, and that's okay. We're judging this event at REL Axed. These are fun, untimed rounds. We want to make sure everyone gets to see what the cards do rather than punish the players for any misplays. This will result in very different judge rulings and more table talk than you'd see at other events. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, welcome back to live. Now we know how all the cards work. And Every single one. Yep, and as reward for doing the judge video on his own, we've banished Nelson to the other room to do his own deck build, which he's doing actively right now. Uh, and Serge gets to do his here. Ta-da! Oh, it's time. Yeah. Now, I'm always excited from a consumer interest point of view uh, about the, the actual unboxing of these. They've, they've, been, they've been very similar for many years, but I'm curious what else is in here. So let's, let's so, see. So no plastic wrap. That's good for people like I, me who I, can't open it. I do like that. Okay. Bad start. You know when there's like a skill testing question? I've already failed. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Very nice. Nine million dollars for Oko. Nine million whatever the currency is. I like that it's a little sun. Okay. And then... All the various pop-out things. We've got, uh, let me see here, plus one, plus one counters. Oh, I, you know what? I wouldn't have even looked at those. Oh. <laughs> Some Planeswalker symbols. Uh, this looks like Death Touch, a stun counter, a flying counter, and a lifelink counter. What are the two big ones? That's the only one I noticed. What are these? Oh, these are just, I don't, I don't actually know. Sometimes I see posts about people being like, what am I supposed to do with these? These are whatever you want. I mean, these are, they got a little cactusy thing on the back. Maybe these. it's like a, a deck divider? Yeah, you can use them as that. Hmm. They're, they're just, I mean, it's, why not? It's cardboard, right? Hmm. Stagecoach attacked, courier killed, mysterious cargo stolen, thunder in the streets. <laughs> Sorry, there's a newspaper inside the thing there. All right, well, what else you got? All right, we got the pretty classic D20 at the top. Mm -hmm. We got all our product. And my rare is the Caustic Bronco. Oh, okay. Giddy up, two mana, two, two. <gasps> Snake Horse Mount. Snake Horse Mount? This is, it's not Bob. Every time you see something like this, you think to yourself, this is a dark confidant. Uh -huh. Whenever you attack, you reveal the top card of your library, you lose life equal to its mana value. But if it's saddled, when you do this, your opponent loses life equal to the mana value of the card revealed. That's Snorse Bob's wrong. I... What? Magic the Gathering. Okay, sweet. That's pretty awesome. Now, I don't know if there's just a token in there or... No, 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 it's just a token. All right. Okay, so we don't have... Actually, can I see? So yes, we don't. Course. We don't have the, like... Extra card. Oh, it's okay. You can, we, do, we don't have the extra card that's in a commander set that you can't run in your pre-release. No. Okay, good. Mercifully, they've done that. <laughs> there is a code for six boosters on Arena, which I will not reveal because those are yours. My boosties. Yeah. All right. I don't know how y'all do this. I always go straight to the back and I look at the rare. Rares. Um, plural. I got a Force of Vigor. That's a big one. That's a big one. I can't quite read it on there. So we'll talk about this a little later uh, in the draft video, but... As a reminder, there are th three additional subsets of cards that can appear in these play boosters. Because okay. there is the list that's the least common, I believe. Uh, the list featuring special guests is the bonus sheet. There's the big score, which is some pretty cool looking artifacts, and those have like a safe door. As and those are new symbol. cards. Yeah. Okay. And then this set with this newspaper style from the Prosperity Post is the breaking news set, and there's one of these in every pack. No kidding. Yeah. Are they all mythics too, or? No, but they're, <laughs> but they're all reprints. So it's got a little like um, jail house symbol. Yeah. Very interesting. All right, so you mean I have more fancy cards. Yeah, it's very, very likely to open more than one rare. So uh, we got dual land at common, which is big. Yes, and notice, this is something Cameron pointed out when we were doing the draft. Because again, when we recorded the draft that you'll see later, uh, we uh, we had not 
the, the set hadn't been spoiled yet, so we were learning a whole bunch of stuff right at the time. Uh, these lands commit crimes. Because they deal damage to UTB. They're also deserts, which is yes. kind of cool. All right. Deserts are back. Uh, I've got a rare dual land. Oh. Interesting. Oh, so, right. Spire 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 Bluff Bluff Canal. Canal. I love canals. Big fan of canals over here. All right. What else do we have that's exciting up here? Uh, not too much. So I'm going to start making stacks. Uh, I'm a monster, and I don't respect Wooburg. Fair. Hey, read that one. Uh, holy cow. Not because it's a pun. It is a pun, and it's a very good pun, but check out this card. So holy pow. Holy pow. <laughs> I mean, it, it hits. Holy cow is a three mana two to ox angel for two and a white. It has flash. It has flying. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life and scry one. This is a common? Uh-huh. After it passed by, the rancher swore she saw hope shining in the pig's eyes. When, when Drake uh, relegated to... <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, it's very good. It's very good. How I, pushed is this set? That's uh, that's that, a common? Yeah. That holy cow seems very strong. All right, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on my uncommons here. Fair. Outcaster Green Blade. 3 mana 1 2 human mercenary. Mercenaries are a relevant subtype by the way. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for basic land card or desert, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. Gets plus one, plus one for each desert you control. That's an interesting direction to potentially build. Uh, I've got a gold card creature. I like to look at the uncommons, because mm -hmm. the uncommons are typically uh, signposts for what the format is trying to do. So it gives yep. a, just an interesting indication of what I should be looking for and what to build around. So if you're curious why I'm skipping commons and doing that. Two mana, three, two, legendary human druid. Two mana, three, two is already really good. For a green and a white, I mispronounced every word there. As long as your turn, mounts and vehicles have hexproof. Whenever a mount or vehicle you control attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. I happen to have a black mount as my rare. <clears throat> so far, no color fixing in that direction, but that's fine. Uh, I got the, the booties. They made new boots. One mana to cast, one mana to equip. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus O, has haste and ward. Mm -hmm. So it's not hexproof, but uh, to make up for that, they gave you a plus one power. I was trying to see if the boots had the fur, but they don't. These boots were made for far more than walking. Oh. They have spikes. All right, and then we have a Boros uncommon. This is really good, too. So X, red, and a white. Create X, red, mercenary creature tokens with tap. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. This is only the second or third Aerolingus. They hadn't quite worked it out yet. So it's not as powerful, but it's still very good. Weird. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't love a black rare and only one black card, but you know what? It's only pack one. Jake and Parr asks, is this a pre-pre-release? Basically, we'll go with that. <laughs> All right, once again, we go to the very back, and uh, this time I got a foily shiny. Ooh. It's an abrupt decay! Yep, sure is. <laughs> Took a second to parse what it was. That's an abrupt decay. Uh huh. That is a foil abrupt decay. Y'all. Surge is big fan. <laughs> that looks really cool. It looks so good. All right. Local uh, purveyor Honest Rut... Oh, yeah, right. Rutstein's here, too. Local purveyor Honest Rutstein clarifies, strengthen, clarifies, comma, strengthens no refunds policy. All the flavor text on the Prosperity Post cards are headlines from the newspaper. I love that a lot. All right. White, blue, not great. I have another one of these fancy cards. It's also in green. Oh, clear shot. Dang, clear shot so good. Two and a green. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature you do not control. Sweet. Somebody asked if uh, anyone from Loading Ready Run worked on flavor text for this set. And we didn't, but I would have loved to because uh, um, I have experience working at a working at like a university newspaper. And doing the, doing the flavor text on these would have been... Real fun, but Kind no. of a dream. Sad, All right. Sadly, no. I looked at the back of my pack, and uh, my green and my black are getting a little more stacked. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got another mythic. Whoa. Oh, so this this one is from the, the, the um, what's it, the uh, big score. The big score. Yeah. yeah. The Bristlebud Farmer, four mana, five, five, plant druid with trample. Vanilla, four mana, five, five with trample. Okay. But wait, <laughs> there's more. 
When it enters the battlefield, create two food tokens. Whenever it attacks, you may sacrifice a food. If you do mill three cards, you may put a permanent card from amongst them back into your hand. <laughs> What's that, uh, the, the wolf from original Eldraine? It's like a 4-4 four, for four, four, and you get, you get one food, and it has trample. It's like Festerhide Wolf or something. Oh, like I thought you were thinking about the 4-4 four, four, for four, that when it comes into play, uh, fights a creature, and you can sack a food to make it indestructible, which was Wicked Wolf, oh, yeah, I believe. Yeah, that was Wicked Wolf. No, I'm t I am thinking of Fierce Witch Stalker. You're mm. right. It's, it's a common, I think. It's a 4-4 four, four, for four, and you get a food. So I got a rare, I got a mythic, uh -huh. and we're not even at the rare from my pack. Yeah, and your, I mean, your, your non-rare prosperity post, your non-rare breaking news from that same pack is a is clear shot, which, you know, might as well be a mythic uncommon. What if we got more black cards? Oh boy. Tiny Bones! Oh, now, tiny I, Bones joins up. I like the Tiny Bones creature more than the legendary enchantment. For a okay. single black, when it enters the battlefield, any number of target players discard a card. When a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, any number of target players mill a card and lose a life. Huh. That's, that's neat, but that's more of a build around. Yeah. yeah. All right. Move our commons around. Love to see more black cards, yeah. just because I want to be in black. You have this Bronco, yeah. I guess you just put this Bronco in your pile. Yep. Whoop. Well, well, maybe someone gets that. <laughs> uh, the uh, what was I going to say? Um, uh, someone mentioned that the, the big score cards, such as this Bristle Bud Farmer, are legal and standard. Cool. Oh boy. All right. Uh, let's check. Uh, look at our uncommons again here. Slick Sequence. Blue and a red instant. Deal two damage to any target. If you've cast another spell this turn, draw a card. Very interesting. So red-blue has a second spell matters sort of sub-archetype, which is kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Uncommon Black Enchantment. Three mana Rakish Crew. Rake, rakish. Rakish Crew. When it enters the battlefield, create another red mercenary creature token with tap to do the thingy. Whenever an outlaw you control dies, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Aristocrats? And don't forget, you have a lot of outlaws. Well, well, well. And then, of course, another uncommon. It's in green. It's a two mana 2-2 two, two with reach, and it adds mana. Tap to add a green, or tap to add two mana of any color spent only to cast mounts or vehicle spells. I, yeah. You got four more packs to get through, bud. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> Are you saying we should speed it up a little? I guess, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you want to move to the building yeah. portion, but... Right. Uh, we can hustle. We can That's hustle. That's okay. It's, I'm... Dinosaur. I am also seeing a bunch of these cards for the first time, and I'm very excited about them. All right, basic land this time is not a dual land. Uh, oh, oh, these lands are so pretty, though. All right, and now Tyrant's Scorn. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a good one. That's a good one. Like that. If we want to play blue, it's there. Actually, I don't know if I owned one. Oh, our boy, <laughs> Fibblethip. Should, I didn't. Shouldn't have gone through that omen path, friend. I didn't want to be in blue, but here we are. And then any other rares? Oh my god, I got another rare in black, Insatiable Avarice. Okay, we can read this one, don't worry. So, five mana sorcery. Yeah. It's got spree. For plus two, search your library for a card, put it on top. For black, black, target player draws three cards, loses three life. So for, yeah, black, 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 it's a leveled up sign in blood. Yep. That's great. So in Highlander, imagine, picture this. <laughs> I control a Shia Dread. I cast this, target you, hit you for nine? <laughs> that's, uh, that's messed up. You say, you say in Highlander, isn't that, that's just doable in standard, is it not? I, don't, don't ask me standard questions. I well, I'm just saying Shieldred is still legal in standard. Is it? Oh yeah. Oh man. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Yeah, I like this one. When it enters the battlefield, surveil one, one, and a white. You don't even have to pay a mana? Doesn't enter tapped? No. What? Yeah. Wow. Is this like the best version of this we've had? Yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. These pylons are what Ral Zarek's been up to. Huh. He's, they're working on interplanar communication network. All right. My uncommons are two reds and a green white. There's a world in which maybe we look at our green white if we get support from our lands, but currently. I know that I said speed it up, but you should read that green white card. Okay. If you haven't, because it's messed up. The Griff. This is a three mana, one four Hippogriff mount. It has flying and lifelink. Mm -hmm. Whenever it attacks, saddled, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of mounts you control and saddle three. Uh huh. That's, uh, it's big. So, I mean, I do have this Miriam, the mount whisperer. Mm -hmm. 
And I've got at least two mounts now with the uh, the weird snaky friend and the hippogriff. So mm -hmm. maybe maybe we're in uh, Abzan mounts. Yep. <laughs> oh, phrases you can say when you're playing magic. What did I say earlier? What was the... I can't remember what it was. The silly thing I said at the top. Another of the basic. Show. This one's not full art, so we can just go into the into the pile. Yeah, it is very cool, and there's a train on it for what? those of you who like trains. Wow. Yeah. All right, foil is a just a common. I like trains. Another propospity. <laughs> prosperity. This one is repulse. Oh yeah. Turn target creature to its owner's hand and draw a card. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh hey. Oh. What? Okay. What is this? What is this pool? This is what amazing. What is this pool? Uh, also, this isn't even showing up on the thing. This is this is amazing. It's the it's it's the the showcase for. Wow, that looks that looks so cool. Howdy. Dang. Anyway, you should read that card also because of the stuff that it does. Oko is a four mana planeswalker that enters with three loyalty. It has a static ability. At the beginning of combat on your turn, Oko becomes a copy of up to one target creature you control until end of turn, except he has Hexproof. Plus one, draw two. If you've committed a crime this turn, discard. Otherwise, discard two. Minus one, get an elk. Mm -hmm. And minus five, for each other non-land permanent you control, create a token that's a copy of those permanents. All right, maybe, just maybe, we ignore the mounts. Yeah, maybe we're... And then we're in Bug, because we also get access to Repulse and Tyrant Scorn. Just saying. That seems pretty sweet. Yeah, Salt High Bombs. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, oh, I don't, oh, sorry, I only have one rare this pack. I mean, this is this is basically a bomb. Look at him. It's another mount. Look at the little possum. Look at him, little tongue. Three mana, three, three. Whenever it attacks while saddled, it gets plus one, plus two until end of turn. Then you may return any number of creatures that saddled it to their owner's hand. Ooh, ETB. Mm-hmm. ETB value. All right. We got Blue's Prairie Dog. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, Prairie Dog's good. Around where I'm from, we call that a gopher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Two mana, two, two with lifelink. It's a squirrel? I'm confused. At the beginning of your end step, if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Prairie Dog. Five mana, until end of turn, if you would put one or more counters on a creature you control, put that many plus one instead. That's a pretty cracked uncommon. This chat is informing me that uh, prairie dogs uh, or and or gophers are taxonomically squirrels. Really? Yeah. For more taxonomic confusion, turn uh, tune in later for a pre-recorded crack a pack that we did of a collector booster where I get something wrong, but I corrected myself in in the edit. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What do you mean get something wrong? Oh, you'll see. <laughs> it's a very similar thing. But you segue like I got something wrong. Yeah. As opposed to someone else. Who, I don't know. I I I just, I, I stressed the wrong word? Don't worry about it. All right. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, nice. That's what we're looking for. That is the dual land in green and black. Love a good gulch. Which is extremely important for what we're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the back of the pack. Uh, cool, Drake. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, All right, good, another bomb? We got a decisive denial. Oh, well, in I mean, green and in blue. If you're if you're already open, to oh play my tight. god, this is wild. This thing is so flexible. Saltai, you've got two different on color. Yep. For Saltai lands over here. All right, our rare finally a miss. Uh, memory vessel. Wait, this is also the big score. Yep. So five mana mythic artifact. Tap to exile the memory vessel. Each player exiles the top seven cards of their library. Until your next turn, players may play these cards, exile this way, and they can't play cards from their hand. Activate only as a sorcery. Interesting. Oh. It's it's like memory jar. Yeah. But kind of worse, but also a little bit redundant. That's kind of cool. Hmm. It's a fixed memory jar. I mean, you play memory jar because it's broken. You don't you don't want a fixed version. Yeah, but I mean, is is fixed oh man, this card's this card's amazing. We is, got another green rare. Is fixed memory jar still just very good? We we can find out in not this pool. Yeah. Uh, read <laughs> read this though. Three mana three three human rogue with reach. Mm -hmm. Whenever you commit a crime, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a land from amongst them onto the battlefield tapped. Mm -hmm. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order, triggers only once per turn. You had me at three three for three. With a, with a keyword? Then, no, you had me at three. Th I love Centaur Courser. Oh, okay. Then you added Reach, and I was like, great, I'm all in. And then you decided, but also... You what can, if I kept going? But also you can do crimes. All right. Uh, I don't know, hold on. 
this looks good. Unscrupulous Contractor is a three mana, three two human assassin. Mm -hmm. When it enters the battlefield, sac a you may sac a creature. When you do, target player draws two and loses two, and oh. you can plot it for three. Oh, what? Oh. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. Um, and then we also have a, this is the signpost uncommon in this color, which we haven't seen. Yay. Is that a beaver in a cowboy hat? No, it's a bear. It's a bear in a cowboy hat. Yeah, yeah. Doc Arlock the Grizzled Genius is a two mana, two, three legendary bear druid uh -huh. for a green and a blue. Spells you cast from your graveyard or from exile cost two less. That synergizes with plot. Plotting cards, synergizes with plot. Plotting cards from your hand cost two less. You wow. Would. All right, you go in the wow pile. The wow pile is getting larger. Like here's the wow pile, and here's the not wow. I should I should switch these. The the wow pile is the ones that are multicolor cards in Saltai. Yeah, cool. Like look at this. Yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. Like if you're looking at if you look at our pool, if we ignore this side, look how much we have to choose just from in here. Yeah. Right. And then yeah, just more more cards in that realm. Why not? <clears throat> Final pack. I can't believe I have another pack. I know. It's like I'm not you're not even necessarily hoping to uh, <laughs> hoping to open anything. Yeah, what do you need right now? It's like, yeah. well, I got the planeswalker, I've got six on color bombs, but do I have enough? You want the uh, the blue black for the for the for the full yeah. trifecta, you want the blue black. Hilariously desert. I want another another common land. Yeah. Alright. I did not get it. I got white red instead. Dinger. Oh well. Dinger. Alright. Uh, we got another foil. Ooh, ride down. That makes sense. Destroy a target blocking creature. Creatures that were blocked by that creature this turn gain trample. Wow, that's kind of cool. Mm. That person's actually riding a horse, which is unusual considering all the other, all the weird things you can <laughs> ride in this in this set. I got two. Oh, why not? Void rend. <laughs> okay, sure. Can't be countered. Destroy target non-land permanent. <laughs> I mean that's. Not really in your colors, but that's a pretty sweet card. It's, it's, it's oh, there's white. a white in it. I didn't see the white because of the mana contrast. I could, I could splash white for this. Yeah. I could splash white for this. We'll put it there. Splashable. You got I got the blue white and mm -hmm. I've got the conduit pylon. Yeah. There's another one. There's another common desert that's just, um, it enters tapped and when it enters the battlefield, you choose a color and it taps for that color. So that's a good one. Uh, Malcolm. Oh, Malcolm. Two mana, two, two, flying haste. Whenever you cast your second spell, each turn investigates. That's really good. Yep. Probably not what you're going to do, but it's nope. a really good card. All right, and now we're into uncommon territory. We're into uncommon territory, everybody. Oh, let's just, to finish the cycle, let's keep talking about the, oh, the signpost uncommons. So, Crown Violent, Violent Cacophony. Cacophony. Please help me. Crown Violent Cacophony is a four mana two three legendary zombie horror with flying. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. You know it's funny, and I'm gonna mention this because it, it doesn't didn't it doesn't come up in the in in the pre-record. Uh, it we opened Chrome and Malcolm in the same pack during the draft as well. Huh. Yeah. Alright. I think they both went to the same player. <laughs> <laughs> this is my pool. Sweet. So here's what we're gonna do. Red and white. Not even gonna look at them. Yep. Not even gonna look at them. I don't think you need to. Yep. We'll put all that away. All right. So what I like to do is I like to go through my colors and I like to put the uh, absolutely will play, maybe play, like uh, synergy cards, mm -hmm. and then definitely not gonna play. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each of two other creatures. That is a maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a two mana and it taps add mana of any color. This uh, void rend is looking more and more playable. Uh, of course, Free Rider Lookout gets played. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I gotta read all these. That's okay. Drover Grizzly, three mana, four, two, bear mount. If it attacks while saddled, the creatures you control gain trample till on a turn, saddle for one. I think my pool is so deep that that actually goes into a maybe. Mm. Possum is a maybe. Drover Grizzly is a maybe for. One of my commander decks, I think. Free Strider Commando is a three mana three three centaur. Exactly what you're looking for. When it enters the battlefield with two plus one counters on it, if it was cast with no mana. So if you plot it, it's a four mana five five. Yeah, so it's a three mana three three or a four mana five five. But Sick. then it's delayed attacking a turn, I guess is the only downside. It seems pretty sweet. 
Yep, here's another must play, the Intrepid Swordmaster. That's another mana dork. How do you feel about cards like Ankle Biter Unlimited? I feel like I, I feel like this is a good thing to have. I always think they're a trap, and then I sit across from one, I'm like, God, this is so annoying. Uh, I think it's better when you have fight and punch. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because then that death touch really does stuff. Yeah, maybe it's a sideboard card? I don't know. What is this? Uh, Tumbleweed Rising. This is a two mana sorcery. Create an XX elemental green creature token where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control, or you can plot it for three mana. I'm gonna put this in the no pile for now. Mm. Oh, I just that's kind of cool, because like you can you can plot it and then just have it hang around in your exile zone until you get have to, a creature. Get to do a thing. Yeah, the problem is it doesn't do anything by itself. Yeah, I know, I know. But you're right. There's a you know a dream world where let's say I play this on four, right? We like plot that for three, play this on four, turn five, I get, you know, a second five five. That's messed up. Or I could just play more of these, you know? All right, clear shots going into my deck, absolutely. Force of Vigor. How many instants? How many, um, this is a sideboard card. What does Force of Vigor do again? Destroy up to two target artifact and or enchantments. And if it's not your turn, you may exile a green card from your hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost. So you could force it, right? Huh. You can like exile the card to cast it for free, or right. four mana destroy two. I just don't know how how many artifacts and enchantments are a problem. I think this is a sideboard card. I think, I think you're right. There's there are there are enchantments in the set, and obviously there's some powerful artifacts with the big score, but I don't know that you main deck force of vigor. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna absolutely main deck this because we're a three, maybe four color deck, yeah. and that gets me my deserts. So yeah. love that. And then the last card in green we have is this uh, Voracious Varmint. Two mana, two, two with Vigilance, and I can destroy an enchantment. I think this yeah. is main deckable. Oh, yeah. I think Force of Vigor is sideboardable. But then again, when more people are playing the format and we know how many problematic enchantments and um, artifacts there are, we'll have a better idea. And your deserts, by the way, you've got the Lush Oasis and the Festering Gulch, and then maybe this Conduit Pylons if you feel like. I'm probably playing the Conduit Pylon. That makes sense. In a, and at minimum a three color deck, absolutely. Yeah. All right, uh, let's go through black now. Skulldudgery, this is a combat trick. I think I've got better removal. I think this could maybe be main deckable in some decks. Is this a reprint? Uh, if it's not, it's a functional reprint. because there's. Is, I think I think Skullduggery is a reprint. Anyway. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, they've yeah. had this effect before. I think in like one of the Innistrads had something like that. Mm -hmm. Ixalan, thank you. Right, the pirate set. That makes sense. Interesting. Uh, rooftop Assassin, 4 mana 2-2, two, two, Flash, Flying, Lifelink, Vampire Assassin. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. Oh, fun. Yeah. I'm going to put that in main boardable. Yeah. It's the... Wow. Yeah, it's the, the Manticore, but with one more toughness and lifelink. Okay, sweet. Unscrupulous Cross... Um, Unscrupulous Contractor, I think, is maybe a maybe. I like this better in sets where there's a lot of pacifism, and pacifism effects. I can't English anymore. Mm -hmm. Alberta took that from me. <laughs> wow, this is great. Two mana target creature gets minus two, minus two. Yeah. Gets minus three, minus three if you control a desert. Uh, yes. It, for each desert you control. Pardon? Yeah, the upside is however many deserts you got. No, the upper, the up, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The ceiling. It's got a it's got a solid floor and a very high ceiling. What is this common? Uh, it's a stormcrow for crimes. Yeah. <laughs> two mana, one two flying bird. When you commit a crime, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. It happens only once per turn. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, get in, please. Uh, Insatiable avarice is absolutely going into the deck. Yep. Um, Rakish crew. I'm not going to play. That's fair. I don't. I don't think. I think this is one of these synergy cards that doesn't really matter in our I deck. Think, I think the. I think the sacrifice sign and blood guy uh, gets in. I think that's as a main board. I think so. I, I've got like ten playables here. Yeah. Okay. Fair. fair yeah, point. yeah. 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 The, the thing is not that these cards aren't good. The the thing is my pool is cracked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got just a wild pool over here. Uh, oh right. Oh, the snorse. Yeah. The the snorse is getting in. Interesting. Um, this bird's kind of neat. This is a 3 mana 2 1 flying bird. Enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each creature that died this turn, but you could also has plot. Oh, cool. That's neat. I mean, you can see sort of this interesting aristocrats ish deck going yeah. on down there. Uh, I don't know if Tiny Boing Jones joins up as good. I don't, by itself, I don't think so. No. Because you would want a bunch of legendary creatures. Also, it does target. 
Like it, it, it's a one mana for an enchantment. What does crime? But I don't think you need to crime that badly. No, no, I don't think I need to crime that badly either. All right, we're at blue. Oh, I mean, we're talking about pacifisms. Oh, there you go. We put that in the maybe pile because my deck is cracked. Second spell, don't care. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, choose target creature and opponent controls. If it's tapped, put a stun counter on it. That seems very good. Mm. Oh yeah, it's a, just a three mana three two as well. Cool. Huh. This is a very interesting uh, Goblet Electromancer. It's a three mana two three flyer. As long as it's not your turn, spells you cast cost one less to cast. You say Goblin Electromancer. I'm in the. I'm. I get put in the mind of Nimbus Nyad, because this is. Not, this is not instant sorceries. It's any spell. It just has to be the opponent's turn, and you have a couple creatures with flash. Yeah. Huh. Oh, good point. Good point, Ken Owen. Um I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, second spell. With plot. With plot. Yeah. It's actually pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. So got another very good uh, Fabled Fording, two mana unsummon. Yep. And if you control the desert, you also get the Surveil. That goes in the maybe pile. Right, Surveil's just around now as a thing to do. Oh my god. Love these effects unlimited. Five mana, four, four. When it enters play, return up to one target tapped creature to its owner's hand. It's good tempo, yep. Somewhere Marshall just shivered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> Ooh, what is this? Oh, yeah. Five mana, three, five Sphinx. Flying Vigilance Ward 2. Whenever uh -huh. you commit a crime, surveil 2. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. that's our top end. Okay, so I originally thought I wasn't going to be playing Fibble Fib. Mm -hmm. But I think I play Fibble Fib now. I think right. the people want Fibble Fib. I think it's also just probably probably pretty good. It's like it's, it's not... Um, what am I thinking of? Future Sight? Uh, the thing where you get to, get to just cast stuff off the top of your That's library. future sight. Yeah. yeah, it's not future sight, but all right. <laughs> it's doing. He's doing a very good. He's trying his best. Three mana, one one with Ward two. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. The top card of your library has plot. The plot cost is equal to its mana cost. You may plot non-landed cards from the top. Yeah, okay, I'm playing that. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, hey, what if divination was just better? Uh, yeah. Pretty good. All right, let's put these down here, and then I've got, these are all playable. So, now is the hard part. <laughs> uh, I haven't even looked at my artifacts yet. I'm just gonna build this deck out of all the playable cards that we have, and hope, <laughs> hope that it's not like 40 cards. Sometimes you have a hard pool, because you don't have a good direction to go to, and sometimes you have a hard pool because Everything is too good. Yep. All right, count with me here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, uh oh, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. That's not even looking at the uncommons that are really good. That's not even looking at our artifacts, which are... When enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic card or desert, reveal it, put it on top, hate that. Mm -hmm. Gold pan, when enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. You can equip it, that's gonna be good, maybe not. Do we play the boots? Mm. Oh, that's a, that's a manolith, isn't it? That is a manolith. I'm gonna pop that on the website. So three mana, tap for any color. Whenever you commit a crime, put a loot counter on it, tap to add mana to and remove two loot counters to draw a card. I have to play this. Note, note that it's you just remove the loot counters, you don't have to sacrifice yeah. the hall. So if I play the bandit's hall, I can also play the void rend. Now very quickly, I, I need- I don't know if you need to be splashing for void rend when you're already in three colors, but you do you. You don't like the void rend? Oh, I, yeah, this is, I'm not building this. You don't like the oh, void rend? Are. Okay, I, I want to wrap it up. I think we're very, very close here. Oh, you're fine. Let's just take a look at our curve. So I here's- got, I got lands here for you. Here's our, here's our, man, yeah. that foil is already pringling. And sleeves. We're in a very warm, moist uh, environment here in Victoria, and that tends to, that tends to do that to the, to the foils, unfortunately. You know, if we lived in Thunder Junction, they wouldn't do that. So the only thing that our deck is missing mm -hmm. 
is sort of like top end threats. So our top end is the farmer, the sphinx, and Oko. Mm -hmm. Oko's only four mana. Oko's only four mana. So that's maybe one quick thing to look at, just to see if we got any beef, you know? Do we have any beef in our maybe pile? Classic Canadian rainforest. I mean, unironically, yes. We're, we, we live in a temperate rainforest here. True, though. It's damp out there. So, I, how many creatures do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's a good point, my other shot. If we lived in Thunder Junction, they would be curving the other way because it'd be too dry. Kind of like how toilets flush. Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. Right, in different climates, they go the opposite direction. Oh, yeah, right. Oka makes creatures. That's true. Would you change anything here? I mean, <laughs> this is. This is ridiculous. This like is this is this is an absolutely deck. wild pool. Like, what are you not running from your 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 maybes? Like this, the bounce card, the that the Drake that makes things cheaper. Um, how's your removal? This is that uh, the the tap, the tap down. So my removal currently is uh, abrupt decay, tyrant scorn, decisive decisive denial, uh, deserts do. I don't know why I asked. Uh, I also have clear shot, uh, repulse, and um, I was gonna say and Oko. Oko is not a removal spell here. Right. So that's that's it. That's it. I also can uh, demonic tutor for basically any card. In my, sorry, vampiric tutor with insatiable avarice here. Gosh, rumbling possum, rambling possum is another three three for three that just potentially gets gets better. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> just gonna quickly go through the gold cards. Wait, betrayal of the vault is one creature of yours hits two creatures of theirs. So I was looking at that. It is oh. six mana. It's yeah. a, it's another very good removal spell, but I don't I it don't like think we gonna, need it. No, it seems like it's gonna be a blowout. But yeah. I mean, these like contractors. Good. This is just a three one for three that draws you a card. Yeah, little Phyrexian meta, uh, Phyrexian uh, Ravager there. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, these, yeah. these cards all seem good, but <laughs> not as good as the ones that you're running. So I'm going to go 23 and 17 here. Uh, I think there is a world in which, because my top end is one five drop, I could maybe put one more spell in. Mm. I've got the mana rock as well, but I do think this deck wants to, because I have so many instants, be a little bit reactive and look to double spell in some turns. So I'm going to go with 23 and 17 here. So I've got three non-basic lands. We're looking for 14. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's count green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve green. Let's count black. One, two, three, four, five, six black. And let's count blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blue. Fourteen. So probably... This is the hardest part. Probably uh, seven six five is what I do. Seven green. Wait, is that that doesn't add up? <laughs> Fourteen. Seven six and five is eighteen land surge. That's more than we would have in total. I have to do fourteen. Right. I have to do fourteen. Seven four three. Three black sources because I also have these and these are both greens. That's 14. That seems pretty good. We want green, especially in the early game, because I also have color fixes in green. So how many forests? Seven forests. Okay. Okay, and then we want um, four islands and three swamps. Chat likes 653. I don't like 644. Uh, we don't need a lot of black. So that's four, if we count the pylons, that's five black sources. Five, six, wait, four, five, six. that's five black sources, six blue sources, and seven, eight, nine, ten green sources. Ten green sources, and I also have a creature that fetches for a land to mm -hmm. color fix to find the splash colors, and I've got the bandits hall. So I really want to make sure I'm heavier on the um, 
Oh, they, they did point out the black black kicker on, on Insatiable Avarice, but I think yeah. that's a late game sort of What's thing. What's the first part of it? It's uh, black and too generic. Yeah, so to do to search for a card. And put it on top yeah, of my that's, library. That's, it's still a very playable card without yeah. that. And yeah, and you do have the Bandit's Hall and the card that searches up basics or deserts. Yeah, the most important part of this deck is not being able to play my, my black on curve. It's to make sure I don't miss on my green. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so important. But yeah, that'd be the deck, and then we would sleeve it up. Uh, any any questions or concerns? <laughs> no, but I appreciate you asking. Yeah, are you are you questioned and concerned maybe for Nelson? Uh, a little bit, although I mean, I'm sure his pool is equally very good. Very possible that he's opened a, a pretty a pretty messed up pool as well, uh, and we're gonna find out very very quickly. We're gonna take a quick break and uh, finish sleeving up and get Nelson in here and then we're gonna play a uh, best of three as a we. Nelson Judge Surge. fight! Judge fight! We'll do a best of three round with uh, with their sealed pools. So don't go away, we'll be right back it's with foils. some Outlaws of Thunder Junction sealed gameplay. We're back. Hi, what's up? Welcome back to the Outlaws of Thunder Junction pre-pre-launch showcase. <sighs> he nailed so it the, the first, first time. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's great. Yeah. Everything's, everything's awesome. Uh, I'm Graham, once again, and I'm joined, once again, by Serge. And now, freshly, it's Nelson. I'm fresh. Yeah. And wait a minute. If you're here and you're here, who's judging this round? Ah! Wow, wow, wow. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. <laughs> hey there, Wheeler. How's it going? Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. I only got one Perfect. line. Perfect. All right, so we just saw Serge build uh, his deck from a pre-release kit. Nelson was in the other room doing exactly the same with a pre-release kit. Uh, I don't think you... Were you watching the, the build at all? As little as I could. Oh, perfect. Your build was both in one of the rooms and on the biggest TV that's outside of this room. <laughs> I did my best not to look, and then I got here before you were done sleeving. I definitely saw a planeswalker. Yep, that'll happen. Uh, who won the die roll? Surge. Surge did. Great. Well, then, let's get underway. Let's fight. Good luck, Surge. Good luck, friend. I am curious. Forest, go. What, what is our record in these? Because nope. we've had a couple of judge fights, right? No idea. No idea? Okay. But I'm going to deal one damage to you with this. Creosote Heath. Yep. Yeah. Extremely rude. So I'm winning this one. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. A reminder uh, if you're just joining us, uh, this, is the, this is the round of sealed that we're doing today between uh, Serge and Nelson. So one on one round of sealed. And uh, after this, we'll be doing six player draft and then later on commander. Bird, wait, how is this not a reach. bird? Uh, Intrepid Stable Masters is a two mana two two human scout with reach. That's who it is. It has tap to add a green or tap to add two mana of any one color, spend to cast a mount or a vehicle. I would be more excited about the bird in this particular thing. Like get this, get this mm -hmm. hoser off the back here and mm -hmm. let, let show bird. Anafenza, funny name for a goat. Cat. <laughs> Go to you. <laughs> Uh, question from chat. The six-player draft is going to be f immediately following this round of sealed. We're doing a day all day long showcase of three different formats. So right now is sealed, then draft, then commander. That's all happening right now on this stream today. If you're watching the VOD later on youtube.com slash LRRMTG, those will be separate videos and you can find them also on this channel. Forest. Bristle pack sentry. Pass. This is a 3-3 plant wolf with defender. Plant Wolf. As, what else does it say? As long as a creature with power four or greater, it can attack. Oh! If we get a large creature, the Plant Wolf can attack. All right. I see what you've done here. You have played a a three mana. Uh, sorry, part of it. Three power two two. So I should return the favor by playing a five mana four four. Oh gosh. This is only four mana. You know what? You know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> Four mana, five five. No, but you've got this creature on the stack, so that's fine. <laughs> You're trying to say. My joke sucked. Okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Bristle bud, farmer, a yeah. five five trample with a bunch of text. Yeah. All right. Sure. Sorry, bud. So uh, it you enters the food. battlefield. Yeah, you make two food tokens, and then whenever it attacks, you can sack a food, and if you do, you mill three cards and put a permanent from among them into your hand. Awesome. I, I was trying to say something about like you know playing ahead of the curve, and I just completely forgot how to English. Look. I'm still jet lagged from Alberta, man. 
That's not true. You're fine. You're in good I've company. It's a one-hour okay. difference. What are you talking about? Look, I'm very, I'm very soft. Alberta was very hard on me. Jesus. Here's the inset food token, which is a, a campfire with a bunch of beans, which I choose to interpret as a Blazing Saddles reference. Oh, pass. Untap. Plants. Congregation Griff. This is a three mana, one oh, four yeah. flying lifelink with saddle three, and whenever it attacks while saddled, it gets plus X plus X solid turn, where X is the number of mounts you control. Back to you. So, a quick question yeah. difference between uh, mounts and vehicles. You can only mount, that's the word, you can only saddle on your turn? That's right, only okay. at sorcery speed. So, they're not, they're not uh, you can't defensively get on. The hippogriff. Defensively getting on doesn't do anything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're right there, Wheeler. Getting some good giggles. When, you, when you're getting on, it doesn't on, do anything, but it could fix our relationship. That's right. Yeah. When you're getting on, don't be defensive. It's okay. Take the compliment. Let's get it on. Can mounts crew vehicles? They can actually, which is funny. My zippers keep hitting the table here. Mm -hmm. How do I want to do this? I was going to mention that earlier. You are tapped out. I'm going to attack you for five. Five, five trample. Great. You have an um, when it attacks, you may sacrifice a food. If you do mill three, you may put a permanent from amongst those cards into your hand. I'd like to sacrifice a food. I'd like to mill three cards. Uh, we hit a uh, Doc Orlock, the Grizzled Genius, uh, an Insatiable Avarice, and a Clear Shot. So you can get the Doc. I'm going to put the Doc into my hand. And these two go into my graveyard. You have a 5-5 five, five coming at you. Not anymore. I'd like to have five less life points instead. Mm -hmm. Oh, this guy. Can you uh, get your graveyard onto yeah, the, yeah, just yeah, yeah, below yeah. the oh, Great beside call. your library? What's wrong with you? What? I'm, Why am I being judged We so don't hard? have enough time. Because <laughs> th there's three judges in the room. All right. Uh, a green and a blue. I'm going to cast the dock. Bear, 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 bear. It's like spells you cast from your graveyard are going to cost two less. Yep. Uh, also, plotting is less, too. Plotting costs less. So spells less. you cast from your graveyard or from exile cost two less to cast, and plotting cards from your hand cost two less to cast. Sounds good. Neat. Uh, then I'm going to pay three mana, and I'm going to cast a Outcaster Greenblade. This is a three mana one, two. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for basic land or a desert, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle, and it gets plus one, plus one for each desert that you control. They've been waiting so long at the uh, Dacon Blackblade family reunion for this one to show up. <laughs> Finally, deserts are relevant again. All right. I'm going to get a Lush Oasis to my hand. Three. This is in play. This is in hand. Past you, friend. On top. Ah, desert goes to hand. Okay. Oh, God. Can you imagine if you put that button in play? Yeah. Oof. Oof. Would you like to cut? Yep. Bucolic Ranch. Um, it's a desert, and it fixes colors to cast mount spells, and it also can get a mount off the top of my library, or put the top card of my library on the bottom, if hmm. it's not a mount. Um, Is that a dinosaur that's just about to have the best day? It looks like it, yeah. <laughs> All right. You're picturing like a wolf entering a sheath pen here, aren't yeah. you? All right. It looks like it's a bunch of cows that are not aware of what's about to happen. I've got a Selvala Eager Ooh. Trailblazer. Selvala, what are you doing here? Well, being two turns behind the curve for powerful four drops, but it's a 4 5 Vigilance Legendary Creature Elf Scout with whenever I cast a creature spell, I create a 1 1 Red Mercenary with tap, target creature gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, it only has sorcery. And tap, choose a color, add one mana of that color for each different power among creatures you control. So cool. currently three. <laughs> hmm. um, I don't think we're blocking this turn either. I'll crew or saddle up the Congregation Griff yep. and then attack for two Flying Lifelink. Yeah, so I go to 17, you go to 17. Back to you. Untap, 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 untap. Untap. Draw for the turn. We're going to play said Lush Oasis. It's going to ding you for one. 
the Outcaster Green Blade is now a 2 3. Time to rumble? Go for it. Hold on. Rumble and crumble. First off, I'm gonna cast Desert's Dew. Judge, he said time to rumble. <laughs> then he wanted to cast a spell. I mean, it is an instant. I could make it happen. That's true. That's true. Okay, begin combat. Target creature gets minus two, minus two. Who would you like to target? I'm gonna be targeting your uh, plant wall. Okay, minus now, three, minus three. Yeah, and it control one desert, so it gets minus three, minus three. You got it. You got to the, the second half before I did there. Uh, flunge. I would like to take damage. All right, one, two, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Nelson goes to five. There is a triggered ability. Oh yeah, you have, right. you have an attack trigger. Yeah. I also have an attack trigger off the farmer here. I'd like to sacrifice another food to mill another three cards. Revealing a land, a land, and a tyrant scorn. I'll take, um, I'll take this forest. Sorry, sorry M14 forest. You've been judged not good enough. Uh, and then Hey, welcome, Raiders. Thank you. I'm going to cast uh, Decisive Denial. Uh, the mode is going to be target creature that I control fights target creature I don't control. I would like my farmer, a 5-5, five, five, to fight your 4-5. Works. Take four damage, farmer. Pass. On top. I read Tyrant's Scorn. <sighs> Woof. Okay, there you go. One more turn. Any creature. Yep. I want to know if it's that you control. Cards that matter from my graveyard. Is that the, is that Tiny Bone? No. Maybe? Planes. There's like these interesting tells, like when a player draws a card and looks in their own graveyard, you're like, ah, Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> but when they look in your graveyard, you're like, what, what could it be? Oh yeah, it's messed up. Why is this? We'll cast Bridled Bighorn, a 3-4 Vigilance Sheep Mount with whenever it attacks while saddled, create a 1-1 one, one Wage Sheep Creature Token. Mm. Pass. Untap, 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 untap. Forest. I've got a Repulse. Return target creature to its owner's hand, then draw a card. I'd like to return your 3-4. Very good. Uh, draw. Flunge. Well, I'm gonna block and do math. <laughs> Not in that order. All right. <laughs> Decided to do the math first and realized blocking didn't even need to happen. We get a skip block step. It's a fantastic new way of playing magic. Yeah. Turns out a five five on turn three. I am going to have to give you a warning for that. Yeah. You did play a mythic rare 5-5 five, five trample for four with two upsides on turn three in the game limited. Yeah. That's not okay. Is that, is it that? Is, it is legal in the rules. Somehow of not, not okay. a crime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but did I commit a crime? Yeah, Nelson did a crime on his first turn by playing the, the, the tag. true. The he hit me first. But for some, I did. For some reason, when you did, there. in the not eyes of God, you committed a crime. <laughs> So and the guys of Richard Garfield, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As Paul pointed out, uh, you know, because of the way that they've chosen to template that, the Meat Hook Massacre, yep. not a crime. Totally cool. Going to this desert, crime. I, Jail, I'm, right I'm away. slightly disappointed that uh, we, we didn't get to see the sheep talking. <laughs> me too, That's Paul. That's the real oh crime. My God. That's the real you're crime. Telling me, you, you're telling me, bud. You're telling me, bud. All right. What, quick, in, what in the Odalite is Can't wait this? to see the sheep token. I think that came from the 3-4. The yeah. I made a sheep. It was repulsed. Mm. Are we just going to walk past that Beck reference? Or... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, All right. Go. So real quick question. I'm aware that it was a sheep dog oh, originally, yeah. but still. Can we, for the duration of this event, say sheriff instead of judge? Thoughts? For uh, the duration mm, of this event. Mm, mm. It's a By good which one. you mean this very next game we're going to play, or no, the entire like free-launch we'll showcase? No, we'll rotating through. You know, are we the sheriff around these parts? Yes, these let's do parts. it. You have to say sheriff, and if anyone says judge, Surge is going to come on camera and correct you. No, 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 no. we'll just Mar ignore them. We'll be like, sorry, I'm not a judge. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's go with Marshall. Marshall? Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. Can Interesting. you imagine if he was here? I'd like to Marshall, be the... Marshall has been called Ben Wheeler, but Ben Wheeler has not been <laughs> called right. Marshall. Okay, so Sh Surge is going to be the sheriff, Wheeler will be the marshal, and mm. I'll be the magistrate. The magistrate? Like yeah, yeah. That's a good one, too. I'd like to be the uh, colonial governor. You don't want to say that on camera, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. All right, my friend, you ready for game two? Born ready. Born ready. I'm not done shuffling though. Some of That's the fair. Yeah. some of the uh, tokens. This one's this one's an angel. It's a three three flying angel. Um, some of them are double sided with this little reminder zone for plot. Plot cards don't actually live anywhere special. They 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 go to exile. But this is a little reminder. It's uh, they printed these for adventure and for companion and things like that. Uh, so it can just be a place where you yeah see. After you plot a card, you can place the exiled card here. I love, the, first. I love the way that they word that. It's just, you you can do this. It's not part of the rules, but you can. Awesome. We made you this this thing. Um, looks like Nelly's going to six. Surge is, Surge is perfectly happy to keep the seven he's got. On camera seven? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean... You plot them in the adventure zone? Everyone loves the adventure zone. Is, is Nelly's sleeve? Nope. We found the real criminal. Nelson chose not to sleeve, and that's totally fine. Yeah. Look, it takes a lot of time, y'all, and then you have to find, you have to find sleeves, and you have to go through the whole act of sleeving sleeves. It's exhausting. I mean, James found your sleeves. You did sleeve them. Thank you. I did it all myself. Right. Okay. With my tired, broken Alberta hands. Like, is the implication that everyone who just goes to Alberta is immediately put into, like, hard farm labor? No, God, it's so dry. <laughs> they were cracking? I had to moisturize, like, seven times a day? Oh. You see what it does to your skin? I do, whenever I travel to, like, a Magic Con or something, by the way, we haven't determined exactly who, but Loading Ready Run's coming to Amsterdam. That's in the slide that you will have noticed. Oh, watch uh, out. Whenever traveling, landing at Victoria Airport, stepping off the plane and just... Oh, Moisture. Deep, oh, Thank God. God. Yeah. It feels so good to be home. A little bit of salt and yeah. a whole yeah. lot of uh, chlorophyll up your nose. Uh, oh Nelson, Love if you're that. okay with it, I would like you to not draw less than six cards. Like mulligan until you get something. Let's have let's have a camera. Let's have a good game here. Let's have a camera. This is not a thing that'll happen at your normal pre-release, yeah. but for the sake of the camera, for the, for y'all's sake, let's let's get a game here. Like, just, mm -hmm. sure. Your opponent may suggest this to you if their hand is the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's get a good game. I here. feel like if I, I put, put a these hand two, of three mocks in. Think like. if I put these two on the bottom, I just my complete equity goes up. But <laughs> I would like to. That's not irrelevant. I would like to defer to my boss here. Surge is trying to tempt me with keeping two cards in my hand. What should I do? I think for the purpose of a showcase, it's yeah. perfectly cool yeah. if you go to uh, him to Torak. Okay. I will, twist, don't you? <laughs> okay, I will keep. Uh, these two cards in my hand, and yeah, they'll, yeah, we'll yeah, continue yeah, yeah. to look at them. Yeah. Surge just wants you to have the cards in hand so we can cast balance. Right. <laughs> All right, we're in. Let's go. I just the battlefield. Ooh. Tap target permanent. Go. Bird. Wow. Love a good owl. What's it like? Yeah. So because, yeah, because this is not the pre it's not a mate. We're not. We don't have to necessarily. Island. You know, you you won't be able to do that at your actual pre-release. But this is a showcase. We want to showcase the cards. Uh, anyway. I will show you these two seven drops in my hand that I don't cast when I lose this game. Sick. It's good. Festering Gulch. Go to 19, please. It taps for a greeny and a blackie. Pass. Two Untap. seven drops? I'm kidding. Oh. Can't believe your mom lets you have two seven drops. Also festering, also gulchful. Oh, we're both at 19. I'll attack you down to 18. I'm at 18. Go ahead. For the sake of the audience, 18. should we let people know that you are playing a different deck? Yeah, I was going to say. Sure. <laughs> it's oh, turn yeah, two. Yeah, blue now. And for the overlay? It's turn two now. Yeah. Paul, my deck is called um, Nassif Fanboy. It's black, red, and blue. That's very different. Transformative sideboard. Uh, Nasif is N A S I F. N A S S I S F. Two S's. S's. Sorry, two S's. No, is there only one S in Nasif? Help us out, chat. <sighs> Let me check. It's been a long time since I beat him in tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Island into. Oh, you could just call my deck Yellow Cowboy Hat. 
That's good. Just call my thick yellow cowboy. Yellow cowboy. Hat. I mean, Paul yeah. just went through all that time googling how to spell Nas Nasif. Yeah, but now he's got another task, another reason to feel great about serving the machine. <laughs> good lord. Bleak. Uh, Serge has played Doc, or Doc Orlock again. Very good. Yeah, the bear druid passed to you. All on top. Some call him the grizzled genius. Some call him, I call him the doctor of love. <laughs> I'm gonna cast this repulse on the doc. At sorcery speed, no less, and then attack for one. Well, 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 I'm at 17. Pass. Gendinator asking if they're guests or just loading ready to run folks this time. Uh, for the same reason that it's not actually pre pre release, uh, we, this is not being sponsored. So uh, the biggest outlier of budget, which was flights and accommodation, uh, did not happen. So yeah, we're, it's, it's just loading ready to run today. I'm going to cast this Doctor of Love. Mm -hmm. The Doc. We love them. Some call them a grizzled genius. Excellent. Pass to you. On tap. Don't you hate it when they uh, reintroduce the McGrizzled genius <laughs> and then they take it away for like six oh, months? Unbearable. Push button here. Oh, it has an activated ability. Draw sure a card and discard a card. Wow. Mm. Is it going to be one of the two seven drops you're never going to get? No, they weren't, they weren't both seven drops. Oh, okay, okay, okay. One of them actually was uh, technically a one mana cost card. The other one's a six. And yeah, it might be this one. Mm. So it sounds like something with Spree. Mm. Writes down. It's actually better for me to just three. discard this two drop. I can't cast it yet, but uh, to say. it's a discerning peddler. Hmm. More looting. Immer Storm uh, yep. Berserker or something? Oh, no, 16. Go ahead. Same as the call time Minotaur Berserker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ETBs and rummages. ETBs and rummages. ETBs and rummages. We'll do your taxes. I'd like to fight you for two. I'll take two. Pass. Untap. Attack for one. I have, nope. before blockers, I would like to flash in a rooftop assassin. Great. It is a four mana 2-2 two, two flash flying lifelink. Mm -hmm. I'd like to move to blockers. You may block. I'd like to block the bird. Great. You gain two life and the yep. bird dies. I have a bandit's hall. Yeah. This is a manolith and I'll say go. Crimes, crimes, crimes. I haven't checked out the set so far. Is there a snake oil salesman? I feel like Discerning Peddler is the closest. Yeah, that's the snake oiler. Can I interest you in some herbs from Noctamoon, fresh from the Omen Path, or a set of Fioran cookware, finest in the multiverse? Yeah, that, that, that's the same sort of... She's selling baguettes. I do love a good baguette. That's the international sketch comedy sign for groceries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to play this pylon. Sur Which is really good. Enters Absolutely. the battlefield, surveil. You surveil. Um, leave on top. Go to fight. I'll take four. And pass. Untap. Surge gains two from Draw. rooftop assassin. Oh, that's true. Honest Rutstein. Because Rutstein's a on Thunder Junction as well, styling himself as Honest Rutstein. So that's definitely the snake oil salesman. All right. What you got, Nelly? I have a Peerless Rope Master. Ooh, the one that taps a, or returns a tapped creature. Yeah, is that gonna resolve? Uh, yes. I'll target your rooftop assassin. And I get a loot counter. Mm. I believe, yeah, sorry, let's double check that, Judge. Is it any time you target with a spell or ability? I know I was just explaining this, yeah. another version of me, but you I want to make sure that- You commit crimes any time you yeah. target a player, a thing they control, or a yeah. card in their graveyard. Abil spell or ability, back mm -hmm. to you. Why the flash creature? Because it's more mana. I'm gonna get it back either way, so he's just trying to get me to spend my mana. Mm -hmm. Now, possibly we're like letting Surge spend his mana on his own, or on my turn, because he's got that mana up. But I chose the flash creature because I can kind of block the other one. I also left the mana up for reasons, obviously. Yeah. So, so now you have to choose between 2-2 two, two lifelink and draw three cards or whatever. I mean, it has flying. Yeah, I'll play it back. Okie dokie. So, kind of an interesting time walk there because I didn't use my last turn. I like that bounce. Right. Yeah, not the most 
good looking turn for Rogue Master. That's okay. Uh, I'll attack you for two in the air. I'll take two. Uh, and then they're back. Oh. The farmer. Look who. It's the strongest farmer. Uh, oh. So I get two food. Look at. And then I will pass the turn. Doc hasn't done much. I thought I had more plot in my deck, but I guess not. I think you've only got a couple. It's early yet. Why'd you have five mana for that? Five, five. Just makes sense, right? You would think. Wow. But, but no. Yeah, no. As no, it you're right. Out, it's messed up. Yeah, actually, if that's the case, hold on. That doesn't actually. There we go. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. I'll attack for four. Uh, no blocks. Take four. Apocalyptic Squirrel suggests that that card has kicker one. This card is more balanced. Mmm. Yeah, just spend more mana. I'd be like, I, you know, I can pay six mana for this and probably feel happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a red mana and cast Skewer the Critics targeting Rooftop Assassin. Using the spectacle cost, I'll mm. also get a loot counter from, Ban from Bandit's Hall. Nice. Three damage to any target. It's a reprint from... Ravka Guilds, Allegiance? Ravka Guilds Ravka? Guilds Ravka? Ravka? Ravka Allegiance. Allegiance, yeah. Sure. Then I'll cast Lively Dirge with Spree. So I'm going to pay two for the mana of the spell, and then two more to return up to two creature cards with total mana value, four or less from my graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, fun. So uh, we'll get a Discerning Peddler and Harrier Strix trigger. I'll tap your Festering Gulch. What and a turn! If that's cool, and then I'll think about discarding a card. I mean, does does the hall specify that it only happens once per turn, or anytime you crime? Uh, once per turn. The hall. Sorry, I thought you were like talking about uh, H A L L. Only one, only one loot counter per turn. Cool. So we got the loot counter for this turn. Good. I'm going to discard this ambushed gigapede that I talked about earlier, ah. and draw a card. And I wanted to tap your land. Yeah, that one. Your Festering Gulch. Yeah, you can tap anything. Mm -hmm. I could have tapped anything, and I chose Festering Gulch. I'll, um... <laughs> you could have tapped anything, but we're happy that you tapped Festering Gulch. I'll, uh, I'll float black in response. Pass. Um, that's wrong. No, 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 it's fine. I'm tap. All right. Draw for the turn. Got a swap. Uh, we are going to start with a clear shot. Oof. I know it's an instant. I don't know why I'm doing it now. <laughs> Isn't it a fight card? No. Nope. Uh, it's a punch. Yeah. Well, you do so a target combat. creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. So well, it's a bite, six six. As I've been told. And I'd like to punch your four four. Oh, doggy. Or bite, as I've been told. Hmm. Then. For addendum value. Yeah. Exactly. Like to attack with the six six triggered ability. I'll sacrifice a food to mill three cards. Great. No, sorry, I had two, so now I only have one. Oh, my bad. So we mill a uh, shackle slinger, a swamp, and an island. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, choose target creature and opponent controls. If it's tapped, put a stun counter on it. That one or a different Indeed. one? I'll take the shackle slinger. Awesome. Yeah, I'll take six damage. Okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but because you've already cast a spell this turn, if you cast Shackle Slinger now, it doesn't see itself being correct. cast. Correct. You yeah. are not wrong. Yeah, the triggered ability would be on wrong. the stack. That's right, Graham. Surge's sequencing was a little off here, but we don't like to draw attention to that. I, I milled it! <laughs> How could I sequence that differently? Well, Should you could have clear shot it after the triggered ability resolves so you get more information before deciding what to clear shot. And then that also actually sets up an interesting spot where you don't clear shot the creature, play the Shackle Slinger, then clear shot something else, and then you get to keep the big thing tapped down. But we try not to intervene like this because that is kind of outside assistance. Another another thing that might might not happen at your own pre uh, release is getting roasted by the judges. Oh, if you go to Yell Jacket Comics and Toys from the years of 2012 <laughs> to 2019, I think you'll find that was incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. <laughs> let's get the uh, let's get the Shackler in play. 
There you go. Three mana, three, two. Pass. Hell to pay. Oh! Target Bristlebud Farmer, X equals five. Yeah. See you, little buddy. Bandit Hall trigger. Nice. So Hell to pay, you get tap treasure for excess damage, but there was no excess. Cool, just checking. Back to you, Surge. Back to Surge. Untap, untap, untap. Draw for the turn. We're gonna start with an Abrupt Decay. Target? It's gonna kill the 2-2. Two -two. See you later, 2-2. Two -two. You lit that Cactus Man on. Then we're going to cast a Repulse to bounce the bird and draw a card. Great. And then I've got exactly lethal for a five damage attack. Well played. Woo! Thank you very much, friend. Holy moly. Technically, you had the trigger I was, before I you was draw gonna the say, card, but yeah. it doesn't matter, but yeah. you know, just for people at home. Yeah, 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 oh so my. they know. My goodness. Well, the, yeah, the, the slinger is interesting because it, it doesn't tap anything. It only really cares about if there's a tapped creature, you can put a sun counter on it, but you know, so it goes. Thunder Junction sealed. Holy. It's, an, it's uh, you know, we're, we're two sets into play boosters, and uh, there's a lot of rares. It Wait, it, do out. it does tap? It taps, and then if it's already tapped, it stays stunned. Yeah. So it taps on the first. First, yeah. Checks to see if it's tapped, and then if it's it is tapped, yeah. it's a stun. What? I read it like three times. No, maybe That's the fourth one. When you cast your second spell each turn, choose target creature an opponent controlled. If it's tapped, put a stun counter on it. That's when I stopped reading. <laughs> Then it says, otherwise, tap it. It's 2024. You cannot stop reading these magic There, cards. Look, I, I would have assumed tap target creature if it was all... Okay. You know? All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all righty. Well, that was a round of Sealed with uh, Serge and Nelson. If you're uh, watching this uh, later on the uh, LRRMTG channel, then thank you for joining us and look for the other videos for the draft and the commander. But if you're here live with us on Twitch and YouTube, stick around because now it's going to be a quick break and then we're coming back with some draft. Don't go away. <laughs>